it's Megs and Nate and welcome back to our YouTube channel and today's video is all about exploring a new city that we are still learning how to pronounce we think it's Gumarish oh that was the best pronunciation yet <laughs> <laughs> which is a city in northern Portugal uh, so today we're going to cover a little bit about using ChatGPT we use AI to help us plan our day and then we're going to cover a couple of the places that we visited and then we'll give you our thoughts <clears throat> on whether or not a day trip to Gumarish is worth it. We're trying to be adventurous. We're like, we're going to a city we've never been to before. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say. And I will say for the most part, I think it did give us a good starting point. At first we asked it a pretty simple prompt of uh, pretend that you're a local uh, from Gimaresh. What would be a recommended sort of itinerary? Um, and we got a, a pretty detailed response of three or four, uh, five, steps of where we should go and at what times we should do those things. We followed that up with a, a more detailed prompt just to get some more specifics. Um, we asked uh, for some dinner reservations or yeah. lunch recommendations, how to get to and from um, Gumarush. And also we mentioned in that second prompt that we were filming uh, for YouTube. So yeah. we asked for some specific recommendations or features of the city that we should point out um, for you, the viewers. That second itinerary that it provided really wasn't that much different from the first one. I actually found that the more specific we asked it to be, the less useful the <laughs> yeah. response was. Yeah, but overall, I think it was interesting. I, I would definitely I'd do it again for a general overview. Yeah, it, it great, gave a great general overview of the city, some historical context and the major highlights of the city. That it was, it was really good for, you know, just for doing that first step of research when going to a new place. Um, you know, going to the more specific information, especially especially when it comes to uh, times when things are open or closed or schedules. Uh, because ChatGPT is only current based on the data from when it was trained, yeah. it's really not going to be good at giving specific information about those types of things. It's known as the birthplace of Portugal because that is where the first king was originally born. He was born there, but then later became the king. And one of the most important battles that helped essentially with the independence of Portugal was fought in Guimarães. It is a, a smaller mm -hmm. city. Uh, it's 55,000 people, um, which is similar to like Sarasota, Florida, or Troy, New York, uh, Revere, Massachusetts. We just went to the bus station. There was a um, bus pretty regularly that went to yeah. Guimarães. Uh, it was only a 30 minute bus ride for us. Other options include going by train. It's um, about an hour and 15 minutes by train from Porto, which is sort of the closest major city. It'd be uh, a longer trip from Lisbon, a three and a half hour drive, about four or five hours by train. Um, but it is a very accessible uh, city by you know, bus, car, or train. We arrived by bus, so we had to walk from the bus station to the historic downtown. Um, you know, Chat GPT suggested we start our tour in Largo de Toral, uh, which is sort of the main square uh, in the historic downtown, and it took us about 15 minutes to walk uh, from bus station to the downtown square. One of Chat GPT's recommendations there was to enjoy the uh, charming atmosphere, I think, <laughs> yeah, in, the in, in, the, in the city square. But uh, all of the coffee shops that were outside had chairs and tables outside them, um, but they were all empty. So maybe it wasn't quite as charming or it was charming if you <laughs> want the quiet. So we kind of stopped by the city square um, and then continued exploring some of the other streets nearby. The Gemaraš Castle, Castelo de Gemaraš, which is um, probably the most significant landmark or most well-known landmark in the city. A uh, castle that was built in the 10th, 10th century and has been basically ongoing construction and reconstruction ever since. Uh, uh, since that time, right up until you know, when we were there, there was still uh, doing some work. Some areas were closed. We couldn't really go into the upper area where we would um, overlook the city. But that whole area walking and leading up to it was a lot of just beautiful green space with parks outside and um, 
nice walkways with a lot of greenery and trees. The fall leaves were starting to turn, so it was a beautiful walk, uh, even though the castle itself is not much to do there. Yeah, yeah. but after that, we just walked down. It's all connected and basically like one big park. There's the castle and then there's the Palace of the Dukes. Yeah, it was, you know, really just a path within that sort of green space yeah. in that park that connected these two structures. The Palace of the Dukes of Braganza, and it was built around 1420 to 1433. It was a mix of medie medieval and Renaissance architecture, and it was by far one of the coolest places that I think I've ever visited in general. Like, it was uh, really cool. When you walk in, it 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 feels like you're stepping back into time. And I don't usually get that feeling that often, but I definitely felt it in that medieval castle. Like I just, it was so grand. It was so big and the decor was so minimal. Everyone talks about the castle when you first read about Gamarish, but I think this palace was the yeah. true highlight of the city for me. Uh, what was so impressive about this place to me is the scale of it, the size of it, but the simplicity of it, mm -hmm. you know, because it is from that medieval time where, um, the structure is basically all stone, you know, so you have such a different sense of place when you're in there versus when you're in um, a lot of the other palaces you might see throughout Europe. Um, so that was really cool. It had uh, 37 chimneys, right? <laughs> for one for each fireplace in all of the different rooms. One thing stood out was the courtyard in the center. Yeah, that was beautiful. Because um, you really get that I don't know, feeling of privacy, even though you're in this uh, city area. And you can see all the 37 chimneys from inside that courtyard, but the building is sort of a square uh, building with the courtyard in the center that kind of unifies all the different sections. Yeah, and we'd spent a good amount of time there. Definitely would recommend that. Definitely a highlight for me. And then after that, we were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we did look for the uh, chat GPT recommended restaurant, which was Tasca de Maria. Um, so. so we Googled it, couldn't find it. I uh, think it might have closed since the time that uh, Jeff GPT had its information from. But, but we did find a, a similarly named restaurant, so we went to uh, at Doña Marie, and um, it was the number one rated on Yelp, so pretty easy research <laughs> from, my, from my perspective, but we were hungry and wanted to go somewhere, and it looked really good. Yeah. It was uh, great food. I tried the Francesina, which is the traditional um, Portuguese so it's sort of like an open face sandwich. It's on like a thick slice of bread, usually um, a few different types of meats and covered with cheese and an egg and then a sauce on top of that. So And a um, side of French fries, because that wasn't yeah. heavy enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need something to dip in the sauce, you know, to clean up your plate afterwards. Yeah. Um, so that was my first time actually trying that traditional dish. And it was good. I mean, it's a heavy meal. So, you know, you have to be ready for something hearty. I did try it. I thought it was good. I love the sauce, which we were reading up on it. And I guess the sauce is what varies. Like some people, every restaurant sort of has their own um, interpretation of the sauce. Um, the sandwich itself originated in Porto, which, you know, we didn't try it in Porto. We tried mm -hmm. it in Gimarães, but it was still really good. I um, was surprised by it. I thought it would be a more of a rich, like a gravy. Yeah, and it was not that. I think it's similar to how we would compare barbecues in the U.S. where this, or a marinade for a steak or something. So the flavor profile, the sauce, the way that that sauce is made is probably more unique to the restaurant. Yeah. So that can vary. You're not gonna get the exact same dish from place to place, even though you're ordering what you think is the same dish, the sauce may change. Continuing on from, from lunch, instructed by ChatGPT, basically a few different variations of see the old town, uh, stroll along this particular street, Santa yeah. Maria. Right. So we had done quite a bit of that in our wandering around already. So we decided to add an adventure of our own that ChatGPT did not recommend. You had found this and suggested it and I wasn't I was on board, but I wasn't excited about it. But I'm glad that <laughs> you did that. You're never excited, but... though. <laughs> <laughs> but you impressed me with this choice. So thank tell you, me about thank it. you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I had actually received an awesome gift. I received a book about visiting Portugal from my co-worker. So thank you so much. And one of the tips that I had was to go to Monte the Pena or Pena Mountain. It's a 10-minute teleferical teleferico ride or cable ride and it was such a beautiful ride it was my first time on a cable car and i didn't know what to expect what is this going to feel like it's going to be really shaky it was perfectly fine 
My favorite part on the ride up was all the construction of the different homes and yeah, stuff that were sure. being built up. So there's a lot of um, impressive places being built up on the side of that mountain. Um, and my second favorite part of that ride was my, my <laughs> little prank that I played where I said that, you know, we're going to have to jump off the cable car without them actually stopping, right? Because, you know, it's just a continuing cable. So when you get to the top, you got to be ready to just jump <laughs> off. But the prank was on me because you actually had to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was no one at the top to tell you when to get out or to help guide you or to tell you where to go. Just you get, get to off. the top and then the door opens at some point and the car keeps moving, but you're supposed to just get out. Yeah. So when you get out of the cable car and you go up like three flights of stairs to actually get to the exit, um, they're in this like, like a fairy tale. Yeah, yes. fairy tale. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Fair so tale. there are these little walkways they have going all over the place and these giant boulders, which are, so cool. I don't know, 50 feet high, some of them. They're huge. Um, and they have some of those arranged into cool little spaces that you can walk through, like in tunnels or like little bridges and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was a very interesting place that I, I didn't expect it to be more than, you know, just the religious aspect of it. Yeah. I just thought that the simplicity and the outside space, like the entire experience of it was very beautiful. Like I felt very relaxed there. Like it was definitely giving sanctuary, like <laughs> come here, meditate, come here, enjoy the, the, the music. There was music that played outside. Yeah, that's what I liked about it was um, even without going inside, the doors are open and you can hear music, uh, you know, from outside the building when you're in that sort of natural space that's already beautiful. Um, looking at the fountain and the gardens and kind of just sitting on the steps leading up to the, the sanctuary. It's very peaceful. Um, it's a beautiful spot. One of my favorite things is just take a path and see where it goes. So we ended up going up a couple of stairs and once you got up there, you could see all of Gimarish and it was really, really beautiful and quiet, calm. There was no one around. Like it felt like our little tower. Uh, so I really like that. Yeah, I think I would have planned more time to walk around up there. Yeah. You know, we ended up not going as far as we would have along those paths and exploring because we had planned it, well, just it was at the end of our day and we had only expected to kind of go up, see this sanctuary and then come back down. We didn't know there was more to, to really explore. So I think we would have done that if we had the time. Even if it's just one day go, it's just so beautiful and definitely do the medieval palace. That, that was my, my highlight. What about you? I think it's a great day trip, um, especially if you're in the north of Portugal anyway. Um, it's easy to get to and there's a lot of cool stuff to see. Um, I think it has more sort of tourist attraction. But yeah, I think it's a fantastic day trip. It's not a place that I would want to spend an extended period of yeah, time or live in for very long, but it's a great visit. Please like, comment below and subscribe if you haven't and follow us on Instagram at Unlocked Vistas for other videos and we'll keep touring and exploring and sharing it with you. Wait, what do I do when you're talking? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do normally when I'm talking? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Usually on my phone. <laughs> hey! Are you sure we're recording? Yeah. No, actually. <laughs> now I'm doubting. Oh, <laughs>